we're going to do an infrared splice, a constant diameter infrared splice, typically used for continuous line furlers like the hood uh, 710s, 810s, 910s. Um, one thing that's important about uh, the infrared splice is that you don't end up with a lot of twists or uh, cockles or whatever you call them in your line like that. If you get your line from West Marine, it's going to be usually in a coil. If you buy it from West Marine, don't use those tables. Just take it off the spool and lay it back and forth over your hand like this without inducing any twists whatsoever in it. Just lay it back and forth over your hand and you're not going to have twists in your line. Okay, when you go to do your spice, you just lay this out on the table and very carefully take the ends without putting twists into them and spice them together and then when you go to put it on the boat, you won't have that problem with the, the lines getting caught up on your, uh, your lead blocks. If you do get your line from West Marine, it's usually going to come like this on a coil if you have it sent to you or if you have one of those guys pull it for you. Okay, if you get the line like this, what you need to do is you need to take it and unroll it just like it was coming off of a spool. So you just unroll it, hand over hand it, and let it pile up into the pile on the floor. Okay? And then after you do that, what you want to do is coil it, or not coil it, but lay it hand over hand just like I showed you in the earlier part there. Just take it, bring it hand over hand, laying it right on top of your hand, back and forth. And then you don't have any twists into it, okay? That's kind of important on an infrared splice. We've got our line cut. We don't have any twists into it. So we're gonna take our two ends. We're gonna pull out, this is a piece of 7 16 double braid by Marlow. It's just a typical polyester double braid. I'm gonna pull about six, eight feet off. Again, we don't have much twist in that line. We're gonna put a couple of stopper knots on this, this end. Actually, it's just one stopper knot. If you were doing this on a boat, you'd tie these off to cleats or something. But right now I'm doing it at the splicing bench, so I'm just going to hook it right up to my splicing bench. Say when you're going. Go ahead. Okay, so we got it hooked up to the splicing pin, so we can pull on it if we want to. And we're going to need to put a, pull on it pretty hard for the milking down of it later on. Okay, so 7 sixteenths. We've got our measurements already on the bench here. So we're going to lay the two ends side by side. And even though this is the end, we're going to just put our baseline measurement right there and then everything past that line, we're just going to throw away. So we'll mark our baseline measurement there. First thing I do is I tape the end so that I can cut off the melted part. And then we're going to get our measurements. Okay, so we've got it laying next to our 7 16 mark. We mark our baseline, and then we go two full fit lengths. One, two. We make marks there. And we go one fit length. And one fit length. Okay, we've got our marks. We're going to call these marks one, two, and three. Okay, that's our baseline mark. Here's our two fid mark. There's one fid and then one more fid. We're going to pull the core out at the second mark on each of these pieces. Just grab it, pull it right out. Same thing on this one. There's two fits, one fit. Okay. I'm prepare the end for attaching the fit. What I this is where I, the tape comes in handy. Cut right across that tape in an angle. another little piece of tape over it so that you're taping it into a nice point. This works real well for my fids. I don't know what kind of fids you got.
If you're worried about the FID coming off, you can always take another piece of tape and run it around here. Okay? So we have one cover connected to our FID. We're going to take our other end and find our first mark at two FID lengths. Where was that? There's one problem with using black fleck. There it is. You enter there, pull out your core so that you bunch up the line. Go past that crossover until you find your third mark. There it is. And you bring your cover out that third mark. Take your fit off and do the same thing on the other one. Okay. Same thing on the other end. We enter it at the second mark. Go past that crossover. Make sure you don't catch any of the cover strands. Pull that core out to bunch this part up. Mix it fatter so that you can get your fit through easier. Look for that third mark. There it is. And exit your fit at that third mark. One little secret about making sure that if you catch, if you catch the core and you're not sure that you might have caught the core before you pull out your fit, just pull it so that the core goes back in. Then if it was caught, it'll just come right off the end of your fit. Then you poke it out that third mark, bring it out, and then you pull your crossover tight. Pull your cover that way, pull this one that way. and get that crossover good and tight. Okay. Now that we've got our crossover pulled tight, what we want to do is we want to hold that spot, that crossover, real tight, and milk this back a little bit. Not a lot, don't work it too much. Milk this one back a little bit. And then what I do is I, I like to just roll this under my hand a little bit, that crossover, smooth it out, and then I cross stitch it so that as I work the rest of the splice I'm not loosening up my crossover. You roll it out, kind of make it smooth and then we'll just put a couple stitches back and forth here. Okay, okay we're just going to stitch a crossover. Doesn't take a lot, just something to keep it from moving. Back and forth about five or six times. Turn it 90 degrees, go the other way. And that's about all I'm going to stitch that because when we're done, we're going to stitch the whole thing. Or I'm not, but you are. Okay, now for all intents and purposes, our splice is made. All we've got to do now is mark and cut and taper the ends. So, we've got our two standing parts held tight. What we want to do is we just want to milk everything back in as far as it'll go. So we grab it all the way to the end and we just pull the cover. And the core is just going to keep going in as much as it'll take. Might have to do this a couple, three times to get all this slack worked out of the cover. Okay. Now we're going to mark 
our ends so that we can cut off the excess and taper them. And the easiest way to do that is just open up your line here and stick your sharpie right in there. You're marking them both at the same time. Bend this open, stick it right in that hole. Mark them both at the same time. Do both sides. Okay, after you got all four pieces marked, or actually eight, what you do is you pull your cover back out until you see the mark that you just made on the other side, which is right there. Okay, the mark you just made on the end of this is right there. You don't want to cut it at that mark. You want to cut it a little bit longer, about a thumb's length. I'll explain the reason for that in a minute. And then what you want to do is you just want to unlay this line. Not all the way back to the other mark, but about four inches, five inches. And then we're going to taper that. Okay? And you do the same thing with the core. Pull that out. There's your mark that you just made. Pull it out until you see the other mark. Put your thumb on it so that you don't cut it right on that mark. Cut it about a thumb length longer than that mark. Unlay it. Taper it. Then repeat the process for the other side. It's okay if these are a little bit longer than what we're going to end up with because you can always cut them off a little shorter later. What you don't want to have them short now because you'll end up with a hollow inside your splice. It won't weaken it, but it'll look like crap. Cut. Okay, now that we've got all four ends cut and tapered, we've got to go and repeat the process of milking it all back in again. So we start at the stopper knot up here. And we slide them back until those things start disappearing in there. And remember, work from your crossover the other way too. That's why we stitched that crossover so that we don't have to worry about it getting loose right now. Keep working it and those ends will get shorter and shorter. And at this point you can start to see why we cut them a little bit longer than our marks because if we'd have cut them right on our marks they'd already disappeared and we would have ended up with a hollow spot right there right there right there and right there this way it's still solid all the way through here but you keep milking it keep working it you don't have to jerk it you don't have to pull too hard you don't have to snap it but just keep working it give it keep constant pressure on there Milk it both ways until you're satisfied you got it as far in there as you can go. And then you shouldn't see the end sticking out. If you do happen to see a little tiny bit of sticking out, you can just pull it and cut it off. Okay? And there's your constant diameter splice. What I always do is stitch the entire thing from the first mark all the way across here to the last mark. But since this is just a sample, I'm not going to do that. It's always a good idea to get you extra strength. Just cross-stitch the entire length of that splice. That's it. Have fun.